let's have the continuation of our tutorial on menstruation 2 and today we'll be discussing the total surface area of a pyramid if this is the first time coming across this video please subscribe to the channel like share and comment now in the previous edition we talked about the total surface area of a prism and we have how the formulas are derived we'll be doing same in this episode when we talk of a pyramid the pyramid is also formed when the vertices of a two-dimensional shapes are all joined at a particular point called the vertice or better still the apex so the names of a pyramid is derived from the base so we can have a square base pyramid we can have a triangular base pyramid and a circular base pyramid we have pentagon and so on and so forth as long as the base is formed from let's say a polygon we can easily call it what the name as a pyramid so in this episode we want to derive the the formula for the total surface area of pyramid so now let's consider a square base pyramid you know we are using the name square pyramid because of the base being a square so this is what we call the apex or the vertice is the, the, the common vertice where all the other vertices are joined then this very area is the base so we can call it the base then if I have a line which is perpendicular to the base that is what we call the slant height then what about the height of the pyramid itself? So if a line from the apex to the center, which is also forming a line from here, which will be a right angle, is what we call the altitude. All right, so both are called height. That is the, the height of the pyramid itself. If you are asking for the height of the pyramid itself, that is the altitude. The line from the apex to the center of the base. Then the slant height is the height that is found in the face. You know, this face is a triangle. So that is the a representation of the height. All right, we want to find the total surface area. The, the whole area on the plane face that these three dimensional shape can cover. And we know when I put this down with the base, you know that this area is going to be in the air which will not cover any flat surface so for us to be able to know the total area this can cover we need to dismantle this into each uh, next, next shape meaning we cut it open and give rise to something in this form you know this is the next of uh, a square base pyramid since all the vertices are joined at a common point called the apex so if i am to label this base let's say with a then it means here is going to be a here will be a a since it's a square base all right then if i'm to label the slant height as l we know it's perpendicular to the base right so this is going to be the slant height perpendicular to the base the slant height now so now i can be able to tell the the surface area that is going to be covered by this uh, pyramid how will i do that so first of all let me find the area of the base okay area of the base we can use b which is going to be length times length c is a square and that will be a times a equals to what a square that's the first thing so you see that this space is covering the a flat surface then we can also see that we can find the perimeter of the base let's find the perimeter so if i'm finding the perimeter of the base if I label that P, that is going to mean that 
L plus L plus L plus L. So L plus L, which is the A, equals what? 4 of the A. So we know the area of the base. We know the surface, uh, the perimeter of the base. So now let's find the area of the faces. You know, this is a face, 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 but they are all triangle. Forming from the same uh, base, which is A, 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 meaning they are all the same. So we find the area of one. So I can say that area of the surface or the face or one of the face is going to mean that we know this is a triangle which says half base times what? The height. And what is the height? The L. Right? So I know the area of each face. This is the area of each face. So from here, what do we do now? We know the area of the base, the perimeter of the base, the area of each of the faces. And the faces are four. So we need to find the sum of all the faces or the sum of the areas of all the faces, right? So we can say that from here, four. Sum of all the faces is going to mean that there are four of them. So four times what? Half base times L, which is the height. Don't forget, this is uh, the base. And the base is our A. So we can replace this to mean 4 half A L, right? Where well, we know we are multiplying. We are not looking for the answer, we are looking for a formula. So this can also multiply the half it can also multiply the A. So if that is the case, I can say that 1 out of 2 is multiplying 4AL. You believe that? Multiplication commutative. So either the 4 is multiplying the half or the 4 is multiplying the, the A. Or even the 4 can also multiply the, the L. And that will be the formula. We know we can cancel. But I can see from here that 4A is here as the perimeter. With this P. So I can rewrite this as half P L. Where P is the perimeter of the base. Do you see that? P is the perimeter of the base. So this right here becomes the formula of the lateral surface area. When I'm talking of lateral surface area, I'm looking out for this. That's a lateral surface area minus the base. So the sum of all the lateral surface area give us half PL, where P is a perimeter. But what are we looking for? Total surface area, including the base. So our total surface area is now going to mean that the addition of the base, which is the area of the base, and the area of the base is B, right? Plus the area of the lateral surfaces. And which will also give us half PL. So the total surface area of any pyramid is given by half PL plus what? The base. So when they talk of the base, we are talking about the area of the base. So imagine the base is a triangle. It means we are going to find the area of a triangle here, find the perimeter of the base, which is the triangle, multiply by the slant height. If the base is a circle, similar uh, approach will be taken. So I will breaking it down in terms of a triangular pyramid, a square base pyramid, which is this, and a circular base pyramid, which we call the cone. Let us consider, you know, sometimes the slant height may not be given, but we need a slant height in the calculation. You might be giving the height of the pyramid itself, which is the altitude. So if the height is here as H, the slant height will be here as L. You can see that the, the height is at the center of the base, meaning if here is A, here is going to be half of A. It is at the center, in the middle of the base. So it divides the base into two. 
Then, if I need to find the slant height, which I need in my formula, we are going to pick out the triangle here, which having the slant height, half of the base, and the height is of the altitude, which form a right angle triangle. Therefore, using the Pythagoras theorem, the A, the L square will be equal to A square plus half A all squared. The half is just that if the value of A is even, you get your number without any fraction. But if in case the base length is an odd number, it means that you are going to get a fraction. So this is what we do in order to find the slant height before we introduce into the formula. So there are questions that will come without the slant height. So if there is no slant height, don't use the height which is the altitude of the pyramid in the calculation. But rather, use the Pythagoras theorems, derive the, the value for the slant height. Then you can introduce back into the formula. Alright, I believe this has opened your eye into how the formula for the pyramid is derived. In the next episode, we'll be taking them type of pyramid as in the circular base called the cone, the triangular base, the square base, rectangular base, one after the other and put them together in a question to see how best we can uh, do that thank you for watching don't forget to share like and comment bye, -bye.